you know, I, I think as a coach, you always um, believe you can win the next game because you believe you can win the next possession. Um, and, um, you know, I thought we, you know, played um, a little too haphazard tonight. I didn't think it was a lack of effort at the beginning, um, but our offense uh, mistakes led to bad defense, and um, it just kind of snowballed on us. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good step forward as a season as a whole. Um, but you know, I leave with a a little bit of a taste in your mouth, like you know, not playing as well here and. Um, man, you want to play well here because there's no, there's really no place like TD Garden in Boston. Like when you're the the fans at the end of the game were, I mean, it's just it's amazing. Um, and so, as I told our guys, we made a lot of great strides, but this pain is part of the path to what we ultimately want to be. Brad Steve Bell, Pat Boston Herald. Um, you know, every every summer there's there's roster turnover. How difficult is that going to be with the group you had this year, considering what you guys had built and just how how things went there? It's difficult every year. Whenever you don't have guys back, I think um, you share a bond. Like I think we had our first uh, practice eight months ago. Tomorrow, um, we've been together pretty much for eight straight months. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of bond that's created with that, especially on a team that, you know, has some success. I appreciated everybody's accountability. I appreciated everybody's approach. I thought that those things were huge in helping us all achieve together. And so when you have a team like that, you know, you're, you're going to miss the guys that aren't back, whoever that may be. Um, and those are great things and lessons for the guys that are to take forward with them. Brad. Brian Robb, 98 Fathom the Sports Hub. Just as a series as a whole, was it, looking back on it, do you feel like you'll be able to gauge what you guys are compared to the Cavs without Isaiah? And was it, is it discouraging, again, how it went down tonight in those first two games, or will you look more at the fight in games three and four? Yeah, I tend to look at, I'll, I'll probably, you know, be discouraged with how we played um, in a couple of these home games. Um, but I do think that, you know, again, I don't think you should have any excuses with who's available and who's not. You just got to go and play to the best of your ability. And, and, um, they were great again tonight. So again, you don't want to take anything away from them. You know, we, as crazy as it sounds, go into halftime, we, we had cut it to at least a manageable number. And then we come out, we get some tremendous looks and Kyrie just goes nuts and, and, ends us. Uh, that's basically what happened. Um, and, uh, you know, those were really tough shots. He hit some tough ones the other night, but those at the start of the third quarter were incredible. Um, but hey, this is just great learning for all of us of how far we have to go. Coach Mark D'Amico, Celtics.com. You've talked all season long about how these guys play with chips on their shoulders and backs against the wall. They always respond. Throughout this playoffs, they did the same thing. How proud are you of this group? Yeah, I like coaching this group a lot. Um, I like being around this group a lot. Um, I appreciate what each guy has brought to the table and however long their tenure has been. I don't think you can always say that. Um, go all the way down the roster and say you appreciate each guy and each guy got better, which I'm really excited about. So um, that's our that's our task. We got a long way to go. You know, we had a great year. We made, in some ways, we made a, a run at it. Um, we made progress, but not good enough. And, you know, I've said this before, if you coach in Boston, good enough's what matters. Brad, Gary Walsh from Boston Globe. From this series, what do you want the players to take into the summer? I mean, it seemed like they're they're a little ways away 
obviously from elite. I mean, what do you want each individual player to take away? Well, I think collectively you take away what elite looks like um, because I think we saw it firsthand, especially in these home games. Um, you know, and we'll see how they match up against Golden State and how that goes. Um, but then individually, you know, there's room for improvement on every on everybody. Um, but we got some outstanding performances, and we got some um, throughout the year, and we really had a lot of guys progress well. But they got to keep making that progress, and I think that starts with Gary. They got to take some time to rest, but then it's a it's a holistic commitment. It's the way you eat, it's the way you sleep, it's the way you treat your body in the off season. It's how hard you work at the little things you need to do better, but more importantly, what you do best, perfecting those things. And we'll come up with a game plan for each guy, communicate that appropriately, whether they decide to stay here and work out with our coaches or, you know, go on and, and work out wherever. Um, when they come back, um, you know, the expectation is everybody's a little bit better. And that goes for me. and. The rest of the coaches, too. I mean, I don't think anybody in there is satisfied, which is a good thing. Jared White, CLNS Media Network. Do you feel overall, besides winning a title, that you guys met all of your objectives for the season? I don't have any objectives other than winning the whole thing. So, um, and I think that, you know, I've said this before. That's To me, that's the only goal you shoot for because then if you don't, if you put your goals lower, then you create a ceiling for your team. And I don't think that's fair to your team. Um, and then the second part is that just allows you to focus on what's important, and that's the day-to-day -day work. Um, and the, one th the other thing that I'd say about this team is they're fully committed to getting better every day. And that's a good thing. That's hard to do. Um, so that, that, those character traits are going to be important moving forward that they continue to be passed on from the guys that are in that locker room. Brad, Chris Gasper, Boston Globe. How do you balance the affinity and affection and admiration you have for the guys that are currently on your team and how hard they've worked with sort of the reality of the NBA? It's such a talent-driven league. And you look at the two teams in the finals, and yeah. those are superstars, all-stars on those, on those it, rosters. And every year you're going to lose guys. Um, whether the guys in our locker room are on our team next year or not, I'll have a great affinity for them. Same way with the guys that have been here in the past. But I think we've got a long, you know, a good amount of people that will be back and obviously a strong core um, with a, with a, you know, also some, you know, exciting opportunities in the draft. I mean, um, it's pretty cool to um, think about that in three weeks, you got the number one pick in the draft. It means that I've got to go straight to work tomorrow. Um, but, um, you know, I'm looking forward to watching some of these prospects. Thank you, Thanks.